Now we need to move into the realm of stem and leaf plots. This is going to be fun. So a stem and leaf plot is another way to represent quantitative data. And it's graphical, but it's graphical based on the numbers themselves. And interestingly enough, Excel doesn't really make these. We're going to, um, I mean, you can kind of cheat and make them in Excel, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, and there is another program that you can use to make them. Well, there's actually lots of programs to make them, but I'm going to show you one in particular. But first, let's learn how to read a stem and leaf plot. So the stem is this column over here. These are the stems. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then over here are the leaves. And then usually there's a key or a legend somewhere around that tells you what the heck is going on. So when you see a 2 and then a slash, that slash, that's that bar right there. And then a 5, that would be the number 25. Okay. So first question that they're asking um, in this example is just learning how to read this thing. So how many students were there that took the quiz? Well, that's how many leaves there are. So there is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31 students. Right? And better make a note to yourself, it's the number of leaves in the plot. Stems don't count um, because, for example, this student right here is 50, and this student right here is 50. So that's one student at 50 and another. Oops, speaking of which, how many students scored 50? Two of them, right? 50 right there and then another 50 right there. So two students were in the, f the 50 range. All right, what was the lowest score? Well, that's this student up here, 0, 6. So they scored a 6 on this quiz. What score occurred the most frequently? Well, it's looking to me like this, this, these three sevens right here, right? Those are the, the most repeating. And that would be one seven, so that's 17. 17 occurred the most often. And there were, th I'm going to make a note, there were three students had 17. All right. Now, what advantage does this have over a histogram? I mean, why would people do this? <laughs> so um, one of the big advantages is you can, um, here, the stem and leaf plot. Is a picture that shows the distribution, just like a histogram, but also shows goodness, the original data. If I just make a list, hold on, let me show you what it would look like. Here it is. So if you just look at this list, I mean, this list is in order. I mean, so you're even got that going for you. But still, it's kind of murky. I mean, you can see that the highest score is 50, lowest score is 6, but it's kind of a mess inside. I mean, how many are there of each group? And what kind of shape does that have? Who knows, right? But when you look at it in this way, you can still see the data just like you can in the list or in a table, but you can get a picture of what's happening, right? So it, it shows the original data and that's really beneficial. So it's a better way in many respects to look at raw data than, a, um, than just a list or a table. It also doesn't have the arbitrary class widths that a histogram or table has. For example, when you look up to the one we made, who decided that there were going to be seven classes and how wide they needed to be and all that? I mean, if you just look at this table, how many people actually had 3.5 in there? You don't know. Right? But when you look down here in the stem and leaf plot, you can tell exactly how many people got what score. Right? There's no, I just made up a class width and went with it. There, none of that. Right? It all comes out better. Now, the disadvantage, of course, is that they can be tricky to make. Right? You have to put them in order. Let me, let me type that up. There we are. Especially if you're working with a large data set, they can be kind of dicey, they can be hard to make, especially by hand, but Excel doesn't make them, you have to use other programs to make them. So it can be kind of a pain.